Hi, welcome to Animation Recap Center. Today we will recap a beautiful movie called, The Wild. At the beginning of the movie, we see a lion named Samson tells his young son Ryan stories of his adventures in the wilds of Africa. These stories are meant to encourage Ryan to be capable of roaring like his father, but the only thing the cub lets out of his throat is a scream. Samson and Ryan live happily inside the New York Zoo, in New York, where they are frequently visited by humans. Ryan is sad about his inability to roar and reveals to his father that he wants to go to the wild to learn how to roar like his father. But, Samson disapproves of the idea. They are later joined by one of Samson's friends, a squirrel named Benny, and Ryan leaves both of them as he walks away. At night, when the zoo closes, all the animals are free to roam and this particular night is the championship game night. So, Samson informs Ryan to attend and watch him play. But instead, the cub chooses to join his friends for the night to play. At the games, Samson and his team which consists of Benny, Bridget, the giraffe whom Benny has a crush on, Larry the anaconda, and Nigel the koala, compete in a turtle curling championship. Interestingly, Benny likes to call giraffe as his girlfriend. By the way, Nigel is unhappy that the zoo has a stuffed toy that looks exactly like him because the animals tease him about it. The game gradually ends and Samson and his teammates lose the match against the penguins. The celebration is short-lived as Ryan and his friends accidentally cause a stampede which heads to the game and endangers the animals. The stampede clears, and Samson scolds his son for putting the animals in danger. They both say hurtful things to each other, and Ryan runs off before Samson can apologize. He sadly walks around the zoo and sees a green container rumored to be heading to the wild, so Ryan sneaks it and lays down. Samson, on the other hand, has no idea about what his son is about to do and heads to his tree to apologize. On getting to the tree, he reluctantly climbs and realizes that Ryan is not around. At this same time, Ryan suddenly gets locked inside the container, and he begins to regret his decision as he calls for help and tries to escape. Samson hears his son's voice and begins running towards him, but as late as the container has already been loaded onto a freight truck, driving Ryan away. Benny, on Samson's orders, heads to the pigeons and asks them to follow the truck, but one of the pigeons named Amu already knows where the truck is headed. He tells them that Ryan would be taken to a dock from where he'd be shipped away, after which he gives them directions to follow the vehicle. Samson's friends prepare to join him to rescue Ryan, but he refuses and informs them that he intends to go alone. Some moments later, Samson hides in a garbage disposal truck, which takes him out of the zoo. Benny also joins him but mistakenly gets thrown overboard when the other animals, whom Samson asked to stay back, come out of their hiding. They later realize that Benny is missing but continue on their journey as there is no time to waste. The garbage truck passes through Times Square, where the animals are marveled by the beauty of the city and also their pictures. After a while, the truck stops, and they all escape being crushed as they get into the streets to figure out their next direction as Benny isn't with them. As they walk on the streets, the group encounters a pack of rabid dogs who chase them to a corner. And instead of standing his ground, Samson escapes through the sewer rather than fighting as his friends expect him to do. When they ask him, he replies that he has no time to fight dogs and his focus is on finding his son. Inside the sewers, they meet two alligator brothers, whom they ask for directions. The streetwise reptiles then lead the way to protect them from any possible danger in the sewers. The next morning, the animals finally arrive at the harbor, but Ryan has already been placed onto a ship and already taken off. Samson is devastated, and he tries to jump after the vessel, but his friends hold him back as they try to comfort him. Now, the animals are clueless about what to do when the boat they are standing on suddenly starts moving. So, Samson scares the driver off by roaring, and they have the boat to themselves but struggle to maneuver it. Larry, the anaconda tries his best to prevent them from hitting the ship, and soon, he and Samson gets the hang of it. Presently, the ship which they are to follow is out of sight, and they do not know the direction through which they'd go. While they contemplate, Benny appears above them. He had followed them with a flock of Canada geese, and he becomes so happy after seeing his giraffe girlfriend. They land on the boat and Benny reunites with his friends, while the geese take off to lead them to the direction of Ryan's ship. Samson and his crew follow the ship as they sail through the Atlantic Ocean for some day, and through storms until they finally arrive at the jungle in Africa. Here, Samson and his friends see the jungle animals being taken into several containers, but later realize that the animals are rescued because a nearby volcano is about to erupt. Ryan's container is open, and he immediately jumps out and begins running away from the ship into the jungle. Samson sees him as he runs into the jungle, and begins going after him, but he loses him. Benny, Bridget, Larry, and Nigel soon meet Samson inside the jungle, and he is terrified that he has lost his son again. Benny, however, calms him and suggests that he uses his animal instinct to look for Ryan, which he does. But Samson's sense instinct does not take them to Ryan. 
but a Hyrax passing feces instead. After he fails to eat this Hyrax, Samson's friends question if he has ever been in the wild like he says in his story. He sadly confirms their curiosity and tells them that he isn't from the wild and asks them to return to the boat as he cannot protect them in the jungle like they think. He walks alone to go find his son while the rest of the group heads back to the ship, disappointed that he never told them the truth. Along the way, they change their minds and decide to look for Ryan on their own, while Samson conducts his search across the jungle. While conducting the search, Nigel is abducted by a herd of wild beasts, who later take Bridget and Larry with them. Nigel is taken by these animals into a mountain whose volcano is about to erupt, and he sees the other wild beasts in their numbers. He is taken to the leader whose name is Kazar, and suddenly, they all bow to him, leaving him confused. Outside, Samson is still in his search for Ryan and along the way, he sees plants and rocks changing colors, which he attributes as his instincts working, so he follows the trail. Ryan, on the other hand, is scared by the noises he hears in the jungle, so he climbs to a tree branch to hide. Here, two vultures see him and fly off to inform Kazar, the leader of the wild beasts, about his presence in the jungle. At the mountain, Kazar narrates to Nigel that the wild beasts have always been prey to the lions for centuries. He pronounces Nigel as the savior of the wild beasts based on an experience he had when he was young. Kazar was about to be devoured by lions, but a toy koala fell from a plane and scared the lions away, saving his life. This experience made Kazar believe that the koala would help him, and his kind create a change in the food chain that will allow prey to become predators and vice versa. To accomplish that, he thinks the wild beasts have to eat a lion and while he says this, the vultures that saw Ryan on the tree arrive to inform him about the news. Nigel reveals that the lions are two and this makes Kazar happy, so he orders that Samson and Ryan be brought to the mountain. The wild beasts then proclaim Nigel as their king, and he looks in awe and lets out mischievous laughter. The gang of vultures returns to the tree where Ryan hides to attack him and the branch breaks, trapping his paw underneath. The vultures attack him one by one but he tries his best to fight them off as he tries to roar, but a scream comes out instead. Samson hears his son's cries from afar and runs to save him, scaring off the vultures. He gets the branch off Ryan's paw and the two reunite, but are soon interrupted by the wild beasts. Samson runs away from the herd, and this shocks Ryan, who expected that his father would fight them off like he always narrated. They retreat to a tree, where Samson reveals the truth about his past to his son. He was born in a circus where he lived with his father and was unable to roar just like Ryan, thus bringing disgrace to his father. Samson's father was overly strict and authoritarian and never accepted him as a son because he wasn't born in the wild. He saw no potential in Samson and allowed him to be sent to the zoo where he grew up and lied about his origins to avoid humiliation. Ryan is disappointed and also angry that all the stories which his father told him were all a lie. The wildebeest soon discover them and push the tree with their horns. Ryan falls to the ground while Samson hangs on. The herd of animals successfully throws the tree over the cliff, and Samson falls with it to the ground, falling unconscious amid Ryan's screams as he is taken to the mountain. At the mountain, he sees Larry and Bridget, who he tells about his father's death. Benny, on the other hand, finally regains consciousness and finds himself in the midst of a group of female dung beetles, whom he later leaves. He then finds Samson's unconscious body, and begins mourning him, thinking that he is dead. But the lion soon wakes up and Benny encourages him to get back his son, giving him the confidence to be himself, even if he is not from the wild. They begin finding their way through the wild and later arrive at the mountain. They then find out that Samson's instincts are actually two chameleons who have been leading Samson to the volcano, so he would help them defeat Kazar's army. Inside the mountain, Bridget, Ryan and Larry are taken to meet the king of the wild beasts, whom they later find out to be Nigel. Kazar then announces that Ryan and his friends would be sacrificed and used for a feast to mark their ascension on the food chain. Nigel, however, does all he can to stall the process of the sacrifice so he would save his friends. Samson uses the chameleon's camouflage abilities to sneak into the volcano, but then his disguise blows off due to the intense heat of the mountain. Nigel, seeing this, still tries to help Samson escape, but Kazar orders his army to attack. Seeing Samson in danger, Ryan runs to meet him and Kazar tries to attack him. Samson jumps forward to protect his son, and a fight breaks out between them while the other wild beasts watch. During the fight, Samson removes one of Kazar's horns and this gets him infuriated, so he grabs the lion with his other horn and throws him across the volcano. Samson, however, holds onto a rock, so he wouldn't fall into the lava and his friends decide to intervene in the fight. They shoot a rock at Kazar using Larry as a catapult, giving Samson enough time to escape from the lava. Kazar still gets to him and continues hitting him so Ryan uses Larry to shoot himself at Kazar as he pounces on him, 
finally letting out a roar. But Kazar still fights him off and throws him across the rock, walking towards him to try to eat him. With Kazar distracted, Samson easily overpowers him and throws him hard across the wall while he goes to meet his son. Ryan lays weakened on the ground and tells Samson that he is proud and happy to have him as a father. Kazar then gets up from the ground and orders the other wild beasts to finish off Samson and Ryan, but they do not do it. They step forward and refuse to serve Kazar any further, having grown fed up with his delusions of being a predator. Samson then gains the courage and roars powerfully enough to push back a charging Kazar. He does this twice, and the power of his roar makes the rocks to start crumbling. So, Samson, Ryan, the group, and the wild beasts flee, leaving Kazar to die in the erupting volcano. Then, they manage to escape on the boat and head back to the zoo in their New York home while taking turns to dance. After that this amazing movie ends here. If you enjoy the movie please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thanks for watching.